Eight or so years ago was when it all started. It was 2008, a year with two firsts for me. It was the first year I played a role-playing game as the Game Master, and also the first year I went to an anime convention. The thing I remember most fondly about that convention was what they called the Analog Gaming Room. I learned a lot about great card and board games, the likes of which I'd never seen before. A year or two later, something about that week irked me. It was something about all the games I played. They were all of Western origin. They were all of Western origin at a convention dedicated to Japanese pop culture. From the moment I realized that, I wanted to correct that dissonance. Big Eye Small Mouth, 3rd edition specifically, was the first game I looked into for this. I felt right at home when I first looked into it. It was a universal setting that could run anything. This made it very similar to the first RPG I had GM'd, Hero System 5th edition. From a gameplay standpoint, it wasn't bad. It could be feasibly used for any setting and the rules were simple enough. There were two flaws that made me shy away from this game though. The first was that this game wasn't really being supported anymore, when we had only the core rulebook and nothing else. The second issue was that this was still just a western game, using rules developed from a western perspective of games. The only thing from Japan it mimicked was its art style, and it honestly didn't do so in a way I enjoyed or appreciated. My encounter with this game wasn't all for naught though. Big Eye Small Mouth helped me discover how to teach myself new games, and thus how to teach them to others. A year or so after my excitement for Big Eye Small Mouth died out, I found out about Maid. This felt like a pretty monumental discovery to me. It was the first RPG from Japan in English I had heard of. However, the very premise of the game was a little off-putting to people, something I kind of learned the hard way. That premise being that the players were maids in service of a common master, played by none other than the game master themselves. A game like that could easily go weird places that make anybody feel uncomfortable. To this day, whenever I mention to people that I'm particularly fascinated with RPGs from Japan, the response is often, like made, and those statements are usually followed up with disgusted sneers. Despite the awkward premise that made it unique in all the wrong ways, there was still plenty that made it quite pleasant to look at. Character generation was completely random, to the point of being downright quirky. Experience points in this game could be gained and used during play and they served purposes besides just improving your character's abilities. All of that mostly because the game was meant to be played from cradle to grave in one session. This wasn't enough to make me set aside my inhibition about running it after the initial excitement of finding it. Despite its strangeness though, I still regard it as kind of an important game, even if I'll probably never play it. A few years after discovering Maid, I learned about the Kickstarter campaign for a game called Tenra Bancho Zero. It was yet another RPG from Japan. Being the incorrigible weeaboo trash I was, and still am, I backed it without a second thought. The excitement I felt when I first received the PDFs for Tenra Bancho Zero was similar to when I first discovered Made, and it grew even greater when I read them. This was a game that was unique in all the right ways. For starters, the peril of character death was gone, meaning that if combat arose, it wouldn't be just for the sake of challenging a character's combat prowess. Not to say that death and setback couldn't happen in this game, they just happened on different terms. It still had something similar to a class system, but you were actually encouraged to have several different classes. And they didn't necessarily have to be similar or synergetic to one another. Oddly enough, when I look back at Tenra Bancho Zero now, I actually notice quite a few thematic similarities between this game and Maid. So naturally, Tenra became my go-to when talking about Japanese RPGs. It was unique in all the right ways, and even had a uniquely Japanese setting. It was exactly as its creator, Junichi Inuoe, intended. A hyper-Asian game. The translator of Maid explicitly stated in an afterword that Maid is odd by both Western and Japanese standards. It's not by any means what all RPGs are like over there. And Tenra Bancho Zero was described as a game that caused a revolution in gaming in Japan. So with that said, 
what would be a more typical example of a Japanese RPG? Japanese isn't one of the languages I know, so my knowledge on their RPGs is all second-hand. But from what I do understand, Double Cross, which is also available in English, is a typical example of their tabletop RPGs. Now, besides reading translated RPGs, most of my knowledge comes from rumors I read on message boards. At best, this means what I know is hearsay from anonymous folks. At worst, it's outright lies. Basically, I'm admitting my lack of expertise on this subject, since without many primary sources, I have to rely on scarce, scant, and even questionable information. So with that said, I'm basing these next statements on the best information that was available to me. So if you hear something contrary to what I said, use your best judgment to come to the truth. Or if you happen to know better, feel free to speak up. With those disclaimers resolved, let me reiterate. Double Cross is the one game available in English that's the most prototypical of Japanese role-playing games. The book has a lot of details regarding combat, but these rules are pretty well divorced from most of the storytelling mechanics. It reminds me a lot of Shin Megami Tensei Persona, to be honest. As an example, in Persona 4, there was a clear divide between the two different kinds of gameplay. A video game RPG dungeon crawl, and a high school life simulator. Despite how at odds those two gaming styles were, they were both part and parcel to the experience of Persona 4. Double Cross is the same way. Maybe getting into fights isn't what you care about in RPGs, but the very world you're set in demands it. And so an aspect of the story you can tell is how they cope with the necessity of violence. The lax rules for storytelling doesn't mean a story can't be told. Furthermore, the combat rules to this game feel a lot like one of its video game cousins. In the time I've run this game, I've seen a lot of rolls for attacks. While a few attacks may have been ineffective, most, if not all, have hit their mark. Much like in video game RPGs from Japan, where misses weren't a common occurrence. A high dodge ability, while useful, won't necessarily guarantee your safety in this game, but the same is also true of enemies. And so it ends up feeling fair. You can expect to hit and be hit, so you can decide whether you want to risk dodging to avoid attack, or blocking to negate some of the inevitable damage. Even if Double Cross is somehow unique as far as games from Japan go, Double Cross will still be the sort of game I want out of a tabletop RPG, ever since that fateful day my sister showed me how to play Dungeons & Dragons. A Japanese video game RPG without the video game. Too bad the English rulebook is filled with all kinds of typos.